Welcome to our seventh exercise. It consists of three parts. Part one will be the calculation of a future PV capacity. First, some theory. If you want to calculate uh, the final value of our initial value after n years of growth, and we have a relative growth rate of a P in percent, uh, we have the following form form formula. K2 is uh, K1, and then what 1 plus percentage rate divided by 100 uh, with exponent of n. For example, if you have to pay some debt and you have an interest rate of 3%, uh, you have uh, uh, then, for example, from the initial value, 100 euros, and then uh, times 1.03, uh, and then the number, uh, as an exponent, the number of years, for example, uh, two years, you have uh, 1.03 in square. And uh, now we want to apply that to photovoltaics. Uh, we want to know the growth rate P, so we don't know it. Uh, we just have some values. Uh, we know that in the year 2012, the global PV capacity installed has been 105 gigawatt under standard test conditions. And now we know uh, in the year 2018, we know that uh, the installed p capacity has been 509.3 uh, gigawatt so how we apply that just we put in uh, the formula so we, uh, we use the formula and uh, we um, want to know now uh, the, the growth rate the ppv and uh, so uh, that's the formula for ppv 100 uh, uh, times uh, then the n root of um, kpv divided by uh, kpv zero so what's this was initial value 105 gigawatt minus one and uh, that is our uh, ppv in percent we put numbers in so in between 2012 and 2018 this uh, six years so we take the fixed root because n is six and uh, kpv uh, one was 509.3 gigawatt and uh, kpv zero has been 105 um, uh, gigawatt so we can eliminate uh, the uh, gigawatts and uh, uh, only calculating with numbers and the result is 31.1 percent or in decimal uh, 0 0.311 So just uh, this is uh, extracted the graph you know from the lecture. Um, and uh, now the next part of that uh, part one exercise is uh, that we should calculate the year when the global energy demand can be fooled via photovoltaics. So um, as you know from the very first uh, lecture, it uh, was calculated that we need about 18 terawatts under standard test conditions. And uh, we now know the annual growth rate, 31.1%. And um, I guess we already know the installed PV capacity and so on. Uh, this is um, the PV1 is now um, the state of 2000, end of 2018 uh, with 509 gigawatt or 0 0.509 terawatt. And also the uh, second part is here, uh, what will be the final costs considering the cost reduction uh, due to a large production so if you remember uh, there was a graph uh, which has been showing uh, the um, decrease of costs uh, during uh, uh, production uh, during uh, more installation and um, the theory is quite equivalent uh, to the formula we used before we just apply it now to costs and we have negative growth rates because the uh, prices are declining. Um, so we have uh, this one, we just put uh, for P a negative value, but uh, the rest remains the same. So the final uh, costs are the initial costs and then uh, this formula one plus uh, the percentage of cost degression is in negative uh, divided by 100 if it's in percentage and uh, the number of years as an exponent. So first uh, is how much is the negative growth of prices. Remember uh, this graph I've been mentioning here. 
Uh, so uh, we got um, a price reduction um, here um, symbolized by this red line. There was some bouncing around this line, but uh, overall we can say over almost 40 years uh, this uh, uh, negative growth remained almost constant. Pro uh, and uh, here you see the uh, cumulative uh, installed capacity. Uh, so a rule over the thumb is with a uh, we can uh, perceive a 24% of price reduction uh, with the doubling of installed capacity. These are both logarithmic scale, so take care on it. You cannot just double this one, it's just logarithmic. Um, and uh, so we apply uh, that, um, that graph and 24% um, um, of price reduction as um, doubling of installed capacity. We know the installed capacity of 2018 and uh, we know uh, the aim, uh, that's uh, 18 terawatts. And um, we want to know after how many years uh, the installed capacity uh, uh, doubled. So we can uh, uh, look, uh, apply the same formula here. Um, we just applied not to, to uh, uh, with euro sign, just to uh, number of years. Here we want to find out the number N. Uh, and uh, this is for, um, um, uh, doubling, so we have here uh, the uh, secondary uh, capacity is the double than the initial capacity, and then uh, we have um, just the logarithm to a base of uh, one plus uh, the percentage uh, rate, and uh, the uh, logarithm of uh, k2 of PV to k1 of PV. Uh, so this is. Um, um, these are our values of installed capacities. And uh, so this is, uh, we know that we have a growth rate of 31%. So this one is a base of 1331 um, of growth rate and uh, the um, capacity must be doubled. So it's just uh, this divided by that. See, this is just a, a two. And uh, then uh, we have, we take the last, uh, Numbers we use then, uh, it's a uh, uh, um, doubling every 2.424 years. It's not constant as you see on this graph, but uh, we take, okay, we say that the uh, last six years as a base, and uh, we take this for um, uh, for growth rate here. So now we want to know um, the year when the global energy demand is not only electricity demand, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a total energy, so all so considering mobility and heating purpose and so on. And uh, if you want to fill, fill that, that by PV, um, and we have the annual growth rate of 31%. Um, today, it's not today, and it was last year, but uh, we take, we have the steady um, data there, uh, end of 2019, beginning of, two, uh, uh, end of 2018, um, beginning of 2019, the total installed capacity is half terawatt. So we apply that, uh, and um, so we want to know uh, the year, how many years from to end of 2019 uh, will that be? Uh, we have um, the growth rate here, 31%. So we have uh, the logarithm is to a base of 1.331, and uh, the a factor uh, between uh, the desired um, um, of the desired capacity and existing uh, capacity is a factor of 35.36. Uh, so we have to um, have a 35.36 fold uh, PV capacity in order to reach uh, that uh, desired uh, 18 terawatts. Uh, if you want to calculate that, uh, sometimes you have to take care. Uh, some calculators do not offer. Uh, um, um, a base uh, of 3.331. Usually uh, the pocket calculators, they have a, a function with a base of 10. Um, so this is all LG, so it means for, um, uh, for logarithm with a base of 10, or uh, the uh, a base E, and that usually the expression LN, but not for the base of uh, 1.331. So you have to apply a rule, and the rule is, um, here the conversion of a base uh, via, so we, we want to have this base, which is in our case 1.331. Uh, we take just the um, uh, base of one that we know, 
uh, for example, if you have a base 10, for example, then you apply the logarithm here, uh, LG would be that, uh, and then um, the um, number uh, you want to take the logarithm of 35.36, uh, that's our X, and uh, then divide it uh, by also the uh, same base, um, but uh, then uh, the logarithm of uh, your um, original base, which we want to use, so divide it by a logarithm uh, for a base of 10 uh, and the logarithm of, of 1.331. And uh, finally, you have uh, that, um, that logarithm to, uh, to a base uh, that it's not implemented in the pocket calculator. So we do that here, and um, uh, this is uh, here uh, equivalent, for example, if you take the base of 10, or LG, and the logarithm of 10, you, so the, the abbreviation is LG uh, of X, so LG of 35.36 divided by LG uh, of uh, 1.331, and that is 12.47. So this is the number of years calculated uh, from the end of 2018, and... Uh, so we add that, so we'll be the mid of the year 2031. Uh, we will reach um, uh, the 18 terawatts, considering growth is constant and so on, so that it's uh, realistic, but uh, um, the years before showed that the, the, the growth has been relatively constant, so uh, th that's possible in, 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 in just a foreseeable time frame that we can supply the whole world with photovoltaics, just considering the existing process. Um, very important issue is the cost. What will, uh, will be the final cost when the 18 uh, terawatts will be reached? We do not calculate the cost of uh, the 18 uh, terawatt uh, because there are several stages there, uh, but uh, we will, for the end consumer or, not, or the, the, the buyer, if, the, if this aim is reached, for example, and you have to substitute some uh, PV panels of these 18 terawatts, how much will be the price then? So uh, we know already from the graph uh, before, uh, from the cost regression, that at the end of 2018, the cost has been at uh, 30 uh, euro cents uh, per watt peak. And uh, then uh, we have the cost formula as I presented already. Uh, and uh, then um, we uh, uh, calculate uh, the cost regression uh, rate in percentage. So we have... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the regression of 24, a doubling of the capacity. And um, this happens after, we know already after we calculated before, 2.4242 years. So we take uh, the root uh, of their end uh, for the doubling and the uh, price reduction um, um, uh, and um, uh, minus one. And uh, that is... Uh, yearly price reduction of 10.7%. Uh, um, uh, so we can apply now this formula and uh, then calculate uh, the price. So that we have the number of years uh, calculated before to reach 18 terawatts is in 12.47 years. Um, and uh, so we have, uh, we now want to know this K2, this will be our final cost when the 18 terawatts have been reached or will be reached. Um, this is our initial price, 0 0.3 uh, euro per watt peak. This is our percentage of, uh, um, of negative growth uh, in prices. Uh, and so we put it here. So we have uh, here all the values. Um, and uh, we have here, uh, one, um, um, this is uh, um, uh, 0 0.073 euro per watt. So it's about uh, 7 cents uh, per watt. Uh, which really uh, cheap is about the price of a kilowatt hour of el electricity we pay today, but this is just for um, a PV panel already, which will last for 20 or 30 years. And uh, the values of those uh, 18 terawatts, so if you want to sell it after they've been installed, uh, it will be a 1,314 billion US dollar. So that sounds a lot, but uh, it's quite comparable to military expenditure and so on. So it's not really uh, that much. 
uh, as a, a sound, as a first uh, um, the first type, and then you uh, whole, the whole world will be supplied uh, by energy uh, from photovoltaics. So um, the last part of our exercise is now uh, we uh, go very much smaller. Uh, we design a solar car port in Germany, and so we. One part is uh, the calculations uh, of PV generator, but first we have to find out uh, what is the consumption um, equivalent to the procedure we learned for designing a solar home system. And uh, so we just um, have some basic data of our car and then we have to find out uh, what's the consumption uh, and then we design the PV uh, panel uh, for that. Um, it should run through the whole year so equivalent to the solar home system, we have to consider uh, the, uh, the typical day of the worst month of the year to run uh, the, run, uh, the whole year. So we know uh, the car should be used at uh, 15,000 kilometers per year. So we consider uh, equal use of each month and uh, it consumes uh, 14 kilowatt hour uh, per 100 kilometer. So that's quite a typical value and uh, the charging, charging uh, battery efficiency is 90 percent. A bit quite optimistic, usually it's some percent less, maybe 85 percent, but okay we can take these numbers here. And um, first question is what is the daily electricity to be supplied by our PV generator or from the grid, whatever we use. And uh, so we know uh, the daily distance is uh, 15,000 kilometers uh, distributed uh, equally over the whole year, 365 days. And uh, so we have here 31.1 uh, kilometers per day. And uh, then we know the consumption per kilometer. And uh, so we have uh, here uh, 14 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer times uh, 41 kilometer per day. Uh, that is equivalent then to 5.75 kilowatt hour per day. So then uh, we should calculate uh, the um, PV generation necessary, including the um, losses by charging of the batteries. And uh, so we have this number and uh, this uh, considers losses to be divided by the uh, battery efficiencies. Um, and uh, then we have here uh, uh, an uh, energy need of 6.39 kilowatt hour per day in average. So one solution is uh, to um, uh, use uh, the uh, direct charge of the vehicle. Uh, so we consider we have only use uh, the car during nighttime or we, we don't charge a, a long time and we can spend some days of the, power of, uh, of the, of the day to charge, uh, um, uh, to charge uh, the car. Uh, and uh, then we can connect it directly uh, to the PV generator. That's usually the cheapest solution uh, because it's mentioned from the exercises before in Germany uh, for large scale PV production, um, prices can go down to four cents uh, per kilowatt hour. If you have a P uh, solar carport, it's usually in the vicinity of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And if you uh, purchase that electricity from the grid, uh, you pay about 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So it makes completely sense to uh, charge it directly from your solar car port. But uh, let's consider the cost and uh, the uh, irradiance um, there. Um, the problem is a bit uh, the solar car port is uh, not inclined usually at optimal angle um, due to the construction. It's more flat. And uh, here we consider an inclination angle of the PV panel of gamma M of uh, 10 degrees only and it's orientated towards south um, as usual as also the big power plants, which is not very favorable in terms of uh, the um, uh, grids um, uh, for the grid support, but now we just want to support our car, so we don't have care about that. Um, and uh, we consider a performance ratio of 0 0.85 and um, conversion, photovoltaic conversion efficiency of our PV generator under standard test conditions of 17%. To calculate uh, the actual irradiance, uh, um, we use a program called PVSYST, but there are other programs like, uh, P, uh, like Meteor Norm for the, uh, for the irradiance only, 
and also um, PV all are also for calculating some systems. So just uh, here we, we use PV systems, no general preference for that. Um, just want to show you how it, uh, this works like. So we just uh, put in uh, the uh, field type, so fixed uh, tilted plane. You can also um, here um, use uh, tracking, uh, um, uh, tracking plans and so on, but here or bifacial or we, we just have a fixed tilted plane here with a tilt of 10 degrees or we call it elevation angle uh, here. And uh, here it's orientated towards south, so it's looking towards south. Uh, azimuth is zero uh, then. Uh, this is uh, calculated uh, for yearly optimization. Uh, so uh, you lose something uh, compared uh, to the optimum about 8% due to the very flat installation. And uh, But you still uh, will have uh, 1032 kilowatt hour of irradiance uh, per square meter for a year. If you go a step further and we take a look at the optimization, how it look like. Um, so it's the same program, but it just we um, uh, take a look at the optimization. Um, here you see uh, um, th this is our selected uh, elevation angles given by the solar carport. Uh, we have here uh, um, plane tilt called here, but uh, same as elevation angle here. It's uh, 10 degrees uh, and um, uh, here um, we see winter because it's the worst uh, conditions and uh, if we would increase in winter by 60 degrees uh, we would have considerably more power so we lose due to the flat position about 28.4 percent for winter over the year this is less uh, it was eight percent only plane orientation uh, that's um, optimum so south is quite good too Um, here we um, want to see, um, we make a different uh, comparison of elevation angles. So here we have uh, 30 uh, degrees of elevation, module elevation angle. That's a st standard elevation of maximum yield. We saw here, uh, so this is, um, uh, okay, this is for winter. If you would choose uh, the yearly uh, optimization, you would end up here that, uh, uh, that the optimum is here at... Uh, um, at 30 degrees of uh, uh, tilt and uh, uh, with the 8% gain against uh, 10 degrees for uh, um, yearly energy yield. Here there's a table which you can uh, print out here. Um, so you have uh, the different months and this is monthly irradiant, so therefore it's kilowatt hour per square meter per month. and. Uh, this is a global horizontal irradiance. That's not relevant for us because even our solar car is elevated by an angle of 10 degrees. And um, the diffuse irradiance, uh, we are just basically interested in the global irradiance here. And um, you see here overall, um, we read um, uh, 1,084 um, uh, kilowatt hour per square meter per year. And here is a monthly distribution so we have um, in January, we have only 34 a kilowatt hour per square meter per month, uh, while we have, uh, for example, in July, uh, we have the maximum 148.1 a kilowatt hour uh, per square meter per month. While uh, we, in the first step, uh, we want to um, see it as an independent system, so we can, would not use energy from the grid. So we have to survive uh, with the low irradiance values in winter. So here in January or even uh, December is even worse. So this is our worst months. There's only 22.6 kilowatt hour per square meter per month of irradiance. So this is already written here. So the monthly irradiance is 22.6 kilowatt hour per square meter. Um, and uh, on a daily basis, that would be a 0 0.75 kilowatt hours per day. I think the formula I gave you, the procedure was uh, calculated on a daily basis. Um, if we now go to 10 degrees, so this was the for uh, optimum, um, you see um, that uh, we got some, um, uh, some losses in overall yield over all, all over the year, but um, worse for us, uh, our worst case of the months are uh, much worse. You see here, you only have here in uh, January 
uh, uh, finally a monthly arrays of 17.3 uh, kilowatt hour um, uh, per month or in other words uh, 0 0.57 uh, kilowatt hours uh, per day. It's in Hartlieb Springer, which is very close to Paderborn. Unfortunately, this is uh, the database. There was no database implemented for Paderborn, but Hartlieb Springer is only some kilometers away from Paderborn. So these values are pretty accurate. Okay, and uh, finally, last but not least, we want to go to extreme. So uh, you don't install your PV panel on your solar car port, uh, but for example, on a facade here, this is calculated here for 90 degrees on a facade on a house before. Um, and um, uh, then uh, you see uh, that um, the total irradiance during the year drastically uh, decreased, uh, but uh, favorable for us, uh, the uh, monthly irradiance during the worst month increased uh, considerably. So here for uh, December 25.3 kilowatt hours per month, or in other words, uh, 0 0.84 kilowatt hour per day. So that's much more uh, than uh, we have before. Uh, we also can think about an immediate, uh, not facade and not very flat, but uh, use an inclination angle of 60 degrees. Uh, that's calculated here. So we have here um, um, still above uh, 1000 kilowatt hours per square meter year of uh, yearly irradiance. And uh, if we take at the worst month, 26.6 uh, uh, kilowatt hour per month in uh, December, uh, then uh, we uh, still have 0 0.88 kilowatt hour per day. But you have to consider the additional BOS costs for the inclination of the modules and so on. So this depends very much on the local conditions. But uh, from a irradiance point of view, that's a good compromise here. Of course, 90 degrees for sage. And so we start calculating here. So just we start with the uh, 10 degrees. Uh, um, saloon here um, as is quite often applied in solar car ports. So um, we have the um, 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 daily irradiance of 0 0.75 uh, ki uh, kilowatt hours per square meter for 10 degrees of elevation of our reefer or our solar panel and uh, the energy uh, to be supplied we calculated already so we just um, uh, have the uh, charging uh, losses and total uh, our PV generator has to pl um, supply uh, 6.39 kilowatt hours per day for the first month. So the, for the rest of the month, we have a surplus. So if you go back to, uh, we come to this formula here. I don't know whether it's exactly now 2.93 because uh, we uh, added some pages to the questions uh, or the roads and, and uh, but you can uh, look up, up. This is a formula here. And uh, so one is uh, by the area, such as you have uh, the um, energy to be uh, supplied and uh, then the irradiance um, times uh, the um, uh, PV efficiency, not the standard test conditions efficiency, uh, that's uh, including already uh, the uh, performance ratio. And uh, you can uh, do it also uh, via uh, the, um, uh, the, the calculate the power, not the area. So we have uh, the area of uh, your PV panel, uh, then uh, the irradiance under standard test conditions, as you all know, 1000 watt per square meter and uh, the and efficiency under standard test conditions. So we have here uh, the uh, uh, the energy being needed uh, to be generated, uh, 6.39 kilowatt hour. The irradiance uh, uh, for a typical day during the first month, 0 0.57 kilowatt hour per square meter. Uh, then the conversion efficiency under standard test conditions, but then multiplied uh, here by performance ratio because it's not standard test conditions. We have temperature losses, reflection losses, and so on, as you all know. And uh, then we would have a our necessary area of our solar carport of 77.58 square meters for the PV panel, which is quite big. Uh, if I translate that into uh, power under standard test conditions, so we apply to here the area times uh, uh, irradiance under standard test conditions uh, times, because we take it for standard test conditions, then we take the efficiency under standard test conditions, uh, then we have a 13.2 kilowatt. Quite a big 
PV generator. Um, and um, if you um, are able to um, apply 60 degrees, that's more favorable because uh, then a typical irradiance at the first month uh, is not anymore 0 0.57 kilowatt hour per square meter, but 0 0.88 kilowatt hour per square meter. And uh, then our area would be uh, here uh, 50.25 meters in square only. It's not only, but drastically reduced uh, to the solution with the 10 degrees of elevation angle. And the equivalent power is if you put in the number of uh, 50.25 square meters, 1000 watt per square meter times uh, efficiency under standard test conditions is 8.54 kilowatt. So the second uh, solution is, um, so perhaps you have to go to work and cannot leave your car at home to be charged with the solar carport. So you use a second battery uh, in the solar carport and um, you have to buy, buy the battery that's expensive, but additionally you lose energy uh, because the batteries are not perfect. So you have to have charging losses at the first battery uh, in your solar carport and uh, you have uh, the already known uh, um, losses in um, charging your electrical vehicle. So um, we say um, that the coulomb efficiency, that means uh, the efficiency uh, for the ampere hours going in and out uh, is 0 0.9. So you lose about 10% of the ampere hours, but also you have voltage losses uh, because uh, the output voltage of that second battery is 48 volts only, but the necessary charging voltage for that battery is 54 volts. So you use um, here six volts uh, due to that. And uh, first question is what is the energy efficiency of the second battery or the first battery? If you see that from the point of the PV generator, so you charge that battery. So it's the first battery that the PV generator sees. Uh, and uh, so we have here the Coulomb efficiency 0 0.9 uh, and the voltage or loss efficiency, it's just the, uh, um, um, the quotient uh, by the uh, voltages. So you um, have an um, a output voltage of 48 volts and an input voltage of 54 volts. And altogether, if you multiply it, you have a total efficiency uh, of 0 0.8. Uh, the energy to be supplied is now more because you have to overcome, uh, you have to take care of the losses here of both batteries. So we have here uh, the pure electricity being needed, 5.74 kilowatt hours per day. Uh, then the efficiency of your car battery, 0 0.8, and the efficiency of the second battery, 0 0.8. And then you finally, you need eight kilowatt hours per day. Um, yes, it was a question here, <laughs> comes later. So what was the necessary uh, size of the PV generator? So we do the calculation once again, first uh, for an elevation angle of the module of 10 degrees. Um, and uh, then we have here um, the known formula here and uh, we um, have here the energy to be supplied is uh, eight kilowatt hours. The irradiance is still the same, uh, conversion efficiency is the same, performance ratio is still the same. So uh, we come to an area necessary of 97.13 square meters. In terms of power, uh, that is, uh, power under standard test conditions of 16.5 kilowatt. Um, if we take 60 degrees, sure, we have a better irradiance for the first month. And uh, then uh, we have an area of 62.91 square meters and um, power under standard test conditions of 10.7 kilowatt peak. Also very important are the costs. So uh, we take the cost of the second battery, um, quite expensive now, it's a bit cheaper, uh, but usually the uh, a full cycle is really good. Usually uh, conventional batteries, they only have 3000 cycles maximum. So you pay a bit more, but get more cycles. And uh, it can be discharged to 90% only, considering a lead acid battery, that's a really good value because lead acid battery, um, when you calculated the solar home system, you would only discharge by about 50% to have a good relation between a lifetime and uh, usable capacity. 
but for lithium um, ion battery uh, that's much better so you can discharge them up to 90 percent uh, um, and uh, still have, um, uh, a good number of cycles um, how much is the size and the cost of that battery considering um, a maximum depth of discharge is 90 percent and two days of autonomy two days of reserve for really bad days even in that uh, uh, winter days and um, as I mentioned already for the rest of the month uh, we will have surplus um, so that's really uh, just uh, the, all the calculations are for the first month uh, the size of the battery uh, is then uh, just we have uh, two days uh, in spare uh, and uh, the maximum depth of discharge so the battery size is about 17.78 uh, kilowatt hours and if you consider the specific initial cost uh, three, uh, 400 euro per kilowatt hour that battery would cost us 7,111 euro initial costs. Um, let's see uh, if we consider the lifetime of uh, that uh, uh, system, um, how much uh, this would, uh, whether we have to exchange a battery uh, or whether this uh, 5,000 uh, full cycles is enough for the lifetime of the system, 20 or 25 years. Um, and uh, here we see uh, Usually this lifetime is given not in partial cycles because we, we are not uh, using the full capacity, we uh, use only partial. But if you transform it into full cycles, uh, we will have uh, then um, um, a cycle as we use it of about 10,000 cycles. So we have 5,000 cycles uh, lifetime if you fully discharge the battery uh, of 17.78 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, while we are using 8 kilowatts only, uh, then uh, the number of full cycles available will be 10,000 cycles. And if we transform it into uh, years and so on, uh, so if we take one cycle a day, as we are calculated for, um, then we have uh, 27.4 years. And uh, that is uh, bigger than 25 years. So we don't have to replace that battery. We can uh, uh, calculate only with initial costs. We don't have to consider replacement costs. Then uh, um, the next step, uh, we should calculate uh, the electricity costs uh, with battery replacement costs. We calculate, we don't have to replace it already. So we can disconsider that. And uh, then uh, for 100 kilometer of driving of the indirect charge option, so we are the second battery. If PV modules lifetime of 25 years cost 0.5 euro per watt, and the mounting, the BOS costs are 0.5 euro per watt, so altogether 1 euro per watt. And uh, the elevation angle first uh, at um, 10 degrees of elevation angle, so we have here uh, costs for that. Uh, so this is our um, power, 13.2 uh, kilowatt, uh, um, and uh, then uh, those costs are uh, 1 euro per watt. This is equivalent then to 13,200 euro uh, for these um, um, uh, 25 years, the PV costs. Um, the the um, driving distance during those 25 years, so we have 15,000 kilometers per year times 25 years, so it's 375,000 kilometers we drive to that distance. So um, we calculate now because usually you have, uh, at least in Germany, the cost per 100 kilometers. So we have uh, the battery costs plus the PV costs uh, and uh, then uh, the, uh, the the costs per um, 100 kilometers. So uh, we have um, this. Uh, these are the uh, the battery costs: uh, seven thousand um, one hundred and eleven uh, um, euros, and the PV cost thirteen thousand two hundred. And uh, um, this value um, of three hundred seventy-five thousand uh, kilometers divided, uh, considering one hundred kilometers. So at the end, per 100 kilometer, we have 5.42 euro per 100 kilometers. So that's not really, but uh, if you consider a conventional vehicle consuming 6 liters per 100 kilometers at uh, 1.6, depending on the type of gasoline you have, even but nowadays it's even a bit cheaper, but um, it's a 9.6 euro per 100 kilometer. 
So you are uh, almost half price uh, with your electrical vehicle, even if you consider the more expensive solution with the second battery. Um, so let's consider whether it makes sense uh, uh, with the 60 degrees of elevation angle. So as we all know, that's more favorable from the irradiance um, values. Uh, but uh, we have to consider additional mounting costs of 0.2 to all together. Uh, we have 0.7 euro per watt uh, of BOS costs. Um, let's see. So we have here uh, the PV costs plus the BOS costs of so 1.2 times uh, 10.7 kilowatt uh, or to 10,700 watts. So we have a total cost of 12,840 euro for that solution. Uh, the PV generator can be smaller on the other hand. So altogether we save some money. And uh, then uh, the driven distance over 25 years is still the same. So uh, we have then costs uh, which are slightly reduced only uh, of um, uh, 5.32 euro per 100 kilometers. So it makes sense to spend more money uh, and elevate the modules. You have to consider shading then. Uh, this, this is not considered in this exercise, but uh, if you have enough area, uh, it's better to incline them and if you don't have shading. If you have shading, it's a different issue. So um, if you have, um, if you consider now the grid, um, uh, so that uh, you um, don't use a battery, but you uh, feed into the grid, so you have negative costs. Uh, you have a gain uh, paid by the utility of about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It's even a bit less now, 9.6 9 cents at the moment. Uh, but here you consider 10 cents per kilowatt hour you get from the utility by feeding your electricity into the grid. But you have to charge your vehicle at night time and pay 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and uh, um, this is good because you have a surplus in, in summer and uh, all over the year. And uh, let's calculate um, how much that is. So uh, you calculate the electricity costs for driving um, uh, the grid balance options, so this option so without battery. And uh, you have costs of 0 0.5 euro for the modules mounting costs because they have uh, 10 degrees of elevation angles of 0 0.5 euro uh, per watt peak. Solution is then uh, we have the PV cost, the same cost as before, um, 13,200 euro. And um, the cost, actually the gain because uh, so negative cost during the 25 years uh, from the compensation uh, from the utility and uh, so we have a yearly um, irradiance of uh, elevation angle of 10 degrees. Uh, when you look up the table, you remember it's a 1,021 uh, kilowatt hour per square meter per year. So that's a yearly irradiance here. And um, you get a 0 0.1 euro per kilowatt hour uh, and uh, for 25 years. Uh, and uh, you have the yearly irradiance, the area of the op your PV panel uh, uh, and the efficiency or each, uh, and uh, under standard test conditions, time performance ratio, that is. So we have here um, the um, compensation here by the utility, 10 cents times 25 years times the yearly irradiance uh, times uh, the area of the PV generator times the uh, efficiency under standard test conditions because the price is also here of peaks this is also under standard test conditions and here we have to consider the actual um, losses here uh, and that's included in the performance ratio and our performance ratio is 0 0.85 so all together uh, we gain during this 25 years 20,800 uh, at uh, 28,614.32 euro and uh, we put an, um, a minus here because it's cost here uh, so negative cost gain the cost uh, of the electricity is a real, real cost because we have to pay for that. Take from the grid for our um, charging our vehicle. Um, just we can we don't use any intermediate battery. We can use uh, the car battery directly. So we have here the costs are. Uh, it's not negative. This is uh, just this is just we have to eliminate it. This is just cost. So the uh, plus zero point three 
uh, euro per kilowatt hour times 6.9 kilowatt hour per day times 265 days times 25 years this is our charging uh, uh, energy to be generated uh, also energy we need for charging our vehicle and all together uh, we have to pay 17,000 because these are costs uh, 492.363 euro and if we all add up this here so we have um, a gain of 28 and a uh, uh, cost of 17 um, so um, uh, plus the cost of the PV generator so the difference between that is uh, plus 11,200 uh, 121.69 euro to put the euro there the cost of your uh, PV generator um, net gain is actually negative cost so this is uh, the cost and uh, while we have negative cost minus 13,000 uh, and then we have here minus 11,000 uh, times minus is plus 11,122.69 altogether uh, we have a negative gain so uh, we have to pay 2078.3231 euro more um, so uh, um, we have to uh, uh, pay for that so we, we, we don't get any profit from our PV generator but we supply our car sure so we have to pay uh, for that uh, our car and let's uh, calculate so this is uh, taken from the net gain is uh, it's really cost is 2078 euro and if you consider uh, the driven distance during 25 years um, and uh, we recalculated for 100 years so we have here the cost for 25 years of driving uh, and at the end uh, we have here 0 0.55 euro per 100 kilometer of driving so it's really cheap um, if you compare it to the cost I mentioned before of a gasoline car which is 9.6 euro per 100 kilometers If you consider um, increased elevation angle of 60 degrees, we have mounting costs of 0.7 euro. Um, and this you can do as a homework uh, on your own because there is a holiday and um, maybe you have some time to do that. Um, and um, yeah, that's already we calculated already. Yes, there should be homework. Or you can switch off and uh, take a look at it later here. So we calculated that already here. Uh, so go quickly um, over it and uh, we have uh, here uh, the PV generator uh, which can be a bit smaller but the mounting costs are a bit uh, uh, um, uh, higher uh, and uh, the cost or the gain of that electricity uh, here we get a bit more um, um, a more irradiance uh, uh, higher irradiance value and uh, then um, we have those negative costs that we uh, get from the utility of uh, um, negative costs of uh, 18,330.71 of gain during a year uh, during 25 years and the cost of electricity taken from the grid during those 25 years are uh, the same uh, 17,492.63 um, euro so the net gain is here um, so this is the cost of our PV generator. Um, these are the costs of our um, electricity frame from the grid. And this is our gain here we get from the utility. Um, but altogether, uh, we have a, ne uh, a negative gain. So we have additional cost here. And uh, then uh, here uh, we pay more uh, of our uh, um, uh, for our electricity uh, but still much less uh, than uh, the cost uh, via uh, compared to a gasoline car thank you very much